Okay, this is Jeff, W6FCC. Kind of a revision of how to install RSPA1. Focusing right now on the server machine, we need to put the ICOM remote software on there and it will act as a server. And then you connect radios to the computer, that is the server, with a USB cable. So starting off, you have uh, ICOM remote utility. So let me just run it. And it comes up and it tells me that I have a couple of errors here. Now this is because the radios are actually turned off and I would go through installing all three but uh, the server can handle more than one radio. So how do you get around uh, this kind of a problem where you have a COM error and uh, server? First thing you should do by the way is you need to name your server, give it a name like in my case W6FCC Jeff server. On your client computer you want to do the same thing so if you use someone else's radios it will show your PC name on their list of users so that they'll know who's using their radio. Then there's nothing magic too about 50,001, 50,003. This could be 40,001, 40,003, or, or even 4,001, 4,003. None of this matters. Uh, when I set it up, I said I had an ADSL or cable TV line, and the language was English. So, you've done that. Now, let's go ahead and, and by the way, there's no servers in the server computer unless you're using that server computer as a client somewhere else. The only thing that should be in here is when you're running ICOM Remote as a client. But we're running it as a server, so there's nothing needed in here. It is the server. So you go over to the radio list, and something you want to do here is you want to add a radio. So in order to add a radio, you need to go over here and uh, you go to local server settings, and you do add, see registered radio list? We're going to add a radio. So when you do add a radio, you need to make sure that it, if you want to run it remotely, this has to be accessible from other PCs. If you're only going to access the radio from this client computer, then you could select this one, but you want to have this one selected. Then here this thing pops up and you never want to try to set up your radios manually. This is, this is a pathway to uh, failure. You want to run it as a USB, but you notice there's no radio shown here. And the reason there's no radio shown here is there are no radios turned on. So what I'm going to do is I have a remote switch on my radios. I'm going to bring up the uh, I'm going to bring up this program here, the device manager. Now to run the device manager, all you have to do is go down here. Let me shut it off for a second is in Windows you say run and you type in dev mgmt <clears throat> dot msc and up pops the device manager and I'm going to try to make it a little smaller so we can see what's going on here so on the ports uh, it has the normal COM1, COM2 and printer port which is on virtually every Windows machine, but it doesn't say anything about radios. So what I'm going to do is I have a remote switch, remote power switch on my radios, and I'm now going to turn on the radios. So I've just turned on the power, and all three radios are now running. Now you'll notice in that case I have a few more connections, and that's because I have a total of three radios hooked up. And it, the question is which one is which? Well when you add them one at a time you'll notice these things come in one at a time. The 7610 which is one of my radios creates two COM ports. Uh, one of them is for the running of RSBA1, the other one is for running other software. But now you'll notice here when you click on this let me go back and then let me go ahead here and say next All of a sudden, there's a drop-down list here. This means that the radios are active in their, these radios. Now, which one am I going to add? 
Now I've, I've already gone through and documented which radio is which and I'll show you what I mean by that. When I, remember you run the device manager and make sure you get radios online. <clears throat> when I set up my radios, let's see what I have here in the registered radio list. Let me back this out, cancel this. I have this thing called 7300 low, I have that one already. And I have a 7610, those are both there. And by the way, the word public means that you've accessed them. You can access them from remote. But when I add, I'm looking for this one. This uh, 02013006 to add as a, uh, a new radio. So accessible from other PCs. And what I'm looking for here is the one on 006. Zero two zero one. That's this one. Two oh nine is this one. It must have had a different number now. It's it's this guy here. It's now five. So I'll say go ahead and add that one next. And the address on this radio is not seven C, it's seven D, which I've changed. Seven D on the next thing. I have a set of users next and I'm going to call it FCC 7300 7D and since this is a test server I want you only to run these radios on low power. Next. Uh, you can ignore the sound settings for now. Just finish. And now I have three radios here, 7610 th here, and a 7300 and another 7300. I've already added a bunch of users to my radios, and so as far as we're concerned, the server is now ready, functional, and it can be accessed <clears throat> from a client computer. So let me minimize this window here. And now I'm back to my machine locally, and I'm going to run ICOM Remote. And uh, this stopped working. That's okay. I'm, I don't care about that right now. So here are my radios, and they're all online. And my server list is a, is a bunch of servers. But this, this, these are the radios that I just set up. Now I set up that 7D. Let's see if we can connect to it. So the speaker and the mic are on default. Uh, you probably want to change those and when you're not connected to the radio that's the time to make changes. So the virtual port number we need to have one so let me first say that we're on the internet and let me make sure that uh, we have a COM port and we just pick any old COM port. How about 22? You have lots of virtual COM ports. I'm going to make the speaker, my desktop speaker, which is a Creative Sound Labs. Make the microphone. Uh, I just bought this little Zactec microphone. And that's ready to go. And then what I do is I say connect. It tells me that my virtual port number is correct. And now I can run up ICOM. Client and you go over here and you say pick the connect set. So what I have now is I have a 7300. I've gone in and changed the uh, I the, the file which we can talk about later. I gave it a name like okay this one I know works. The connection is USB even though it's across the internet the radio is connected by USB and it's 7D low and you check that 12 COM port 12, COM port 22. So this is not right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to a different radio temporarily. Then I'm going to go back to this radio. 7300. Pardon me for slowing down here. Uh, let me pick a different radio here and then come back to this one.
7D. Now it picked up the COM port 22 correctly. It picked up the 7D. It's got the 115K baud. You could manually put these in here, but it's best to have the program force those in there by picking something different, another remote utility. And we are using the remote utility. We're not doing something funny like not used. We're using the remote utility. And the other mistake sometimes people make is they say, oh, the connection is remote. Well, when ICOM uses the word remote here, they mean the remote jack in the back of the radio. And we're connected with the USB jack on the back of the radio, not the remote. Remote's very limited. But this doesn't mean what they imply as a remote radio. It means the remote jack. And we're connected to the USB jack on the radio. All this stuff is correct. I want to have the radio turn off, uh, turned off when I shut this down. You also want to check the V-Audio. You notice the V-Audio 4. <clears throat> V-Audio is used by programs like uh, uh, RIDI decoding programs and, and uh, Morse code deprogramming and things like that. The V-Audio is never used for your normal communication. So this is a, a virtual COM port used by other applications. So I'm going to uh, ignore that. And now I'm going to go over here and I'm going to connect to it. and it's connected. Let me turn this down. I'm now connected to that radio and I can change the modes and do all kinds of things but uh, I'm now connected. A couple other things you want to check next to this set mode uh, you probably want to be sure that the uh, that the squelch control is turned on. It may default to off but when you have it on when you are listening to a station or a channel and there's hardly any any activity you can you can move this up a little bit and that little pointer that's happening up here this is where the squelch is set now how did I get these sliders that's another good question in the set mode area I said that the control type is sliders I don't like knobs if you do use knobs, you have to mess with this inner and outer knob. And it's also difficult to set the filters. But when you set it to sliders, the filters are now the top and the bottom of the filter are separated. And the AF and squelch are now separated. So that's another one you want to set. The uh, confirmation beep is just annoying. If you have it on, I mean, you can turn it on. Then everything you tap... makes a noise. I don't like the noise. So you come back here and you turn off the uh, confirmation beep. Next thing you want to be sure of is that in the mod area that the mod select is mic. Sometimes you're using your program and you may end up being in V audio or file mode. It should be mic. So you want to be sure that that's in mic mode. Another one you want to check is on the remote. Right click on remote and that radio doesn't use the accessory port it uses either the mic that's on the radio itself or this USB connection so this is how you want it and when I disconnect this RSBA1 control is returned back to the microphone next you can come down here and mic set you want to be sure that that's on USB this is something a common mistake and that is about it. Um, depending on the band you're in, you may want to check that filter. Uh, for sideband, you want the filter to be a little wider than that. So there we go. We're now set up. Now while you're running RSBA1, even on the uh, server computer, if I turn this off, if I click remote and make that light disappear, or go, go uh, dark, Microphone is now returned back to the physical radio. So uh, if you don't turn that off, this is controlling the microphone. So I'm going to turn this back on again. I'm now controlling the microphone. And this uh, device here, 
how you change the frequency and you probably don't know this maybe you do you can actually take the keyboard on your <clears throat> Icon remote and type in a frequency 14 uh, 250 let's say now I like uh, 7.205 oops 7. Point. Oh, that was a comma. That was why. Seven point. Uh, do it again here. Seven point two oh five. Um, if you're going to run CW, you right click, and you do want to set the speed, the key speed. There's a lot of right clicking going on in this program, and uh, this is how you change lower and upper. Whoops. But that's it. You can turn the tuner on, you can turn the, you know, other things, but uh, that's about it. W6FCC. You set up the you set up the server first, added the radios, gone to the client, make sure that these connect set items match the one you're connected to. If these are not the same, you're going to get an error. 7300, yes. USB, that's how it's connected. FCC 7300 7D low and by the way the names of these radios in the radio list are what the servers set up you don't name these radios and you also don't enter the radios here the radios end up on the radio list tab because you've connected to the server so there we go that's it I'm going to disconnect now this is how you properly shut down RSB on you first shut it down here and then you go over here and you right click and disconnect. You want to disconnect the radio. And this allows other people to use the radio or you. That's it, W6FCC. Setting up the server first, adding radios, and then the client. Have fun.